Hey, behind me today is my 2011 Range Rover HSC Luxury. It has 125,000 miles and the transmission has failed. The stator bushing in the transmission, which is a pretty common issue on these, has failed. So around town, drives great, shifts pretty good from one through three, but after the fluid warms up, three through six is pretty much not doable. So today I'm gonna to be walking you through how to replace your transmission. So I've sourced this 96,000 mile transmission. I was gonna rebuild mine, but couldn't pass up this great deal on this one. Um, so 96,000 miles, I'm gonna be replacing everything and walking you through the steps. Um, yeah. So really quick, I thought I'd go over everything that I'm gonna be replacing today. Um, I have 11 liters of, which is a little over 10 quarts of um, transmission fluid. I have four seals that go between my mechatronic or the valve body and the actual transmission. I have a brand new set of ZF solenoids. And your biggest friend on a project like this is gonna be Ziploc bags and a Sharpie. So you can document where everything goes um, and not misplace anything. Really helps out a lot. And then I also have exhaust gaskets. It's not pictured. So first things first, we're gonna be removing the exhaust. Um, the crazy thing about these cars is this exhaust goes all the way from the headers to the muffler. So we're gonna first unbolt um, at the headers. There's three bolts on each side. And then we are going to, I'm not sure where, but I'll point them out. Um, release the exhaust from the hangers and slide this out the back and go from there. So now we will be removing the bolts that hold the exhaust to the, they're not really the header, it's really a downpipe. Um, there's three on each side. You remove those really quick. It helps sometimes when your vehicle has not had the exhaust off in a while to remove the bolts while the engine is a little bit warm, not hot, so the exhaust may move a little easier. So the next step is going to be removing the exhaust from this um, holder right here and then unplugging your O2 sensors if you follow that blue line up to here. Or, yeah, right here. That is your O2 connector. So you're gonna remove that and there's one over here. And then we'll work our way back even further. Next we have two nuts which hold the muffler to the tow bar there's two or one on each side and they are a 15 millimeter and then after that the exhaust will drop i'd already pulled it but here's the last spot so you just have here uh by the transmission subframe and then the six bolts at the front under the hood, I forgot to first thing, but now's a good time to unbolt your battery. Um, is a 10 millimeter on the negative terminal and pull that and you should be good to continue. So back underneath the car, we're ready to pull the drive shafts front and rear. Um, this is the only spot where you'll really need a specialty tool. So we'll need a E12 Torx bit for the six bolts on the drive shaft at both ends. We also need to pull out all of these heat shields. So lots of, I think 10 millimeter bolts, and then we should be good to go. So now we can better see what we're working with here. So six bolts there, two bolts here, and six more bolts here. And the same for the front without the center carrier. And then the drive shafts will be out. Next, we'll be removing the transmission pan uh, shield, I guess. There's two bolts on this side and two on the other side. So we'll drop that and then we'll get around to draining the fluid 
and moving on from there. So now that that shield's out of the way, we're going to drain the fluid out of the transmission. Um, you can see this one has a metal pan upgrade, so your pan may look slightly different. But the fluid will be drained out right here with an Allen key. And yeah, then we'll move on to disconnecting the linkage and maybe start tackling some of these bell housing bolts. So while the transmission fluid is draining, uh, I thought I'd address. So I don't want to have to adjust my linkage again later, and I may be wrong in this thought process, but I'm gonna remove the linkage from the transmission here and then remove these two bolts and then just move that to the side and hopefully won't have to readjust my transmission linkage later. Um, I may be completely wrong though, that may not actually uh, keep me from having to do that, but that's my advice on that situation. So now we're gonna be addressing the transmission, two transmission cooler lines. It is one bolt and there are two seals that will need to be replaced. You may notice my drive shaft is still in place. I um, can't get it to separate from the transfer case at the moment. I'm gonna have to let it set up with some PB blaster a little longer and hopefully can remove it. If not, it will just have to come down when the transmission comes down. But yep, just have your pan ready to collect any fluid that escapes from right here. So now that the fluid has been drained and the rear drive shaft has been removed, working on the front, I'm going to, instead of removing the rear cross or the transmission cross member next, I'm actually going to remove the lower bell housing bolts and I'm going to start working on the uh, torque converter bolts because I feel like those are going to be a hassle and if I'm already am having to support the transmission, I may not have the best visibility and access to this. So I think it's going to be smart to go ahead and tackle the torque converter bolts. So I will update you as that goes on. So with the driver's front wheel removed and this heat shield peeled back, I was able to gain access. You can kind of see my, uh, you can see my socket right there, the black sticking out. So that's how I gained access to the uh, torque converter bolts or to the flywheel. Um, the workshop manual showed coming in from this way and I could not get any torque down with all my extensions that far out. And so what I ended up doing was basically just having my socket wrench extending this way right through here and laying on my back underneath the car, reaching my arm up and pushing up. And that was the only way that I was able to get these bolts out. Um, it took me a lot longer than I'd like to admit, but I got them out. So now I'm going to be tackling the transmission cross member. I have removed the ground strap for the transfer case and will now be removing the isolator. And so that has two 18 millimeter, well, an 18 millimeter nut and 18 millimeter bolt head. Uh, remove that, you will need to support the transmission. This is kind of awkward because of the way the cross member works. If you have a jack on the transfer case, your jack will get stuck within it and you'll kind of have a hard time getting it out. So I'm going to put a small jack under the transmission and I will be removing this and then I will bring in my transmission jack when I have the transmission cross member out of the way. So we'll see how this goes. So now you can see that I have the transmission supported by the transmission jack. I added these ratchet straps overnight since I took a break and didn't want anything to happen. So just a second added safety measure, I guess. But so I'll be taking those down. I'm going to now want to slightly lower the transmission so I can gain access to uh, some electrical connectors along the top and stuff like the uh, O2 sensor, front O2 sensors or upstream O2 sensors. And we'll go from there. We'll start tackling the uh, 12 bell housing bolts. We have 10 short and two long. They're all 13 millimeter heads. And we'll go from there. So as you can see, I've now lowered the transmission and transfer case slightly. I have already removed the two O2 sensor connector heat shields. And I'm now working on tackling the bell housing bolts. You can see my drive shaft still doesn't come out. Hopefully it doesn't cause any issues as we 
continue on. I just can't get it to break away from the transfer case for some reason. But you can see we have now have a better view of the bell housing bolts and they're all 13 millimeter heads. So we will tackle those now. Oh, and I've also removed all the connectors from everything. So as you can see, the transmission and transfer case have been removed from the vehicle. I was able to finally get my drive shaft to separate from the transfer case. Um, so what I had to do, unfortunately, in my case, due to the corrosion, the transmission wouldn't easily separate from the engine. Um, so I had to actually run a come along wrapped around the transfer case to just add some more pressure um, pulling force on the transmission. Um, after doing that and kind of shaking it back and forth a couple times, it finally broke free. And now I can move on to further disassembling this and then reinstalling it. So from here, you have a pretty good view of the back of the engine and you can kind of see the flywheel and the engine block and the exhaust and all that. Uh, I hope that this video has been helpful. I know that I kind of skipped around a little bit, but just a general guide for removing the transmission from a 2010 to 2012 Range Rover, uh, I guess HSC and supercharged models would be pretty much the same. But uh, I hope this video be, has been helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Thanks.